Does anybody have questions? Anybody? Um, you, sir. It seems to be a movie that happens in a complete bubble. You know, it's not the real world. It's a kind of, uh, you know, a little romantic kind of story that you're telling. Did you ever feel that, that you know, you weren't connecting with uh, some, you know, um, I don't want to be crass about it, but the somewhat difficult political situation we find ourselves in today? I think all stories have their own little bubbles, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't, you can't contextualise the whole thing. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't quite understand the quite. If you're suggesting that, that I should be embracing uh, the political situation in every in, in every film. No, I'm uh, suggesting that you made a decision that was not not to have this. Well, you made a world. decision to make yeah. yeah make a film about about this guy dealing with his his issue and and and, and, and the people the people around him and and that, yeah that was that was the focus. Yeah, mm. yeah but, but if you look at if you look at like all that jazz, right? It's all, it's, all, it's all about Bob Fosse or Bob Fosse's alter ego. It's not about the Iranian crisis and Jimmy Carter. I mean. I wasn't going to make that, that comparison myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just. Given that you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to put it in the simply observation that you know you're making a, a, a romantic film in this fashion. I think it, I think that there's a there's a, certainly a romantic element to it. Yeah. yeah. You talked about putting the script up early, and as if enough people don't have comments about script and want to change things, and there have been pre-screenings. With I don't know really how much the blog, part, in that bit, participated in the creative process. But as you get involved with blogging and you know Hughes' influence, is that interesting? Is it a distraction? Is it an opportunity? It, for me, it was very interesting to put the script up on there. It was a nerve-wracking experience. I, you know, I, I was I was very nervous that I was a, a going to sort of you know give away the story or whatever, and b you know see what you know, you know people, people would like it or not like it or whatever. After a very short while, I, I kind of didn't. F I realized that the, the, the majority of the comments that were coming back were not particularly useful, and so I took it off because I just thought this is this is not helping me. This is get this is confusing the issue and 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 no good, you know. Um, but it was an interesting experiment, and 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 you know uh, uh, maybe for another project, which is probably f less far down the line, where I'm trying to get some interaction with people, it would be an interesting thing to do again. Yeah. But in in that case, it, it, it didn't work. But we, you know, well, we had a, our blog um, all the way through the film, written by Colin, and Colin, occasional yeah. contributions from myself um, and from from my cast. Um, uh, and and so that that was another another part of it. And that was really a. I think about about try, trying to encourage people to to interact with the process of the of, of the film and 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 to sort of demythologize some of the filmmaking pro, uh, you, you know methods and all that, and that was that was that was a successful thing. And then the the, the blogger screen that we had when we before we were finished was also really nice because I was I was effectively trying to ask people to help us find an identity for the film because uh, yeah, I kind of you know it's it's it films a lot of things and I kind of wanted people to help help me on that. I don't know I didn't get that many sort of you know, instantly usable answers, but I certainly got some feedback, and it was and it was it was it was very useful to the process. So, so our kind of touching on it, you know, uh, has has had its kind of you know all, all the way through the, uh, the you know from from script onwards has has been interesting. Say that. <laughs> um, it was just a question about you've done one movie without the influence of the blogosphere. You've done a film now and involved the blogosphere. Will you take the the lessons learned from producing a movie and releasing it without this external Web 2.0 type influence and take this and move this forward into the next movie that you make? Or will you just take this as a on the, on the spot type of experiment and ignore it for the future? Just interested in your thoughts. I think I think the answer is it depends how how it evolves in the course of the next um, you know and you know, once the film is kind of out there in the world because at the moment it's just you know it, it's sort of getting ready to emerge itself into the world. Um, but I I think it'd be foolish not to not to take some lessons from it and uh, you know and, and naturally if there are ways that, that that we can that we can take it further the next time then I'd be very interested in doing so. To me, there's a theme between um, young, Ad uh, young Adam and Helen Foe, um, and that's uh, the de development of the relationship between man and woman, and also just uh, development of characters. And I find it very, very real and genuine the way that you've portrayed it. Is that, is that something that you want to continue in future movies? Uh, I, I, I'd say yes. I mean, I, you know, I mean I'm, I'm quite keen on, on those elements of the, of the films that I've been allowed to make. So, I, yeah, if I can, I, I'll carry on doing that. Yeah. 
I was fortunate to see the previous screening you did, and it was, as you say, uh, fairly kind of rough in terms of sound. And where did you come up with the idea for the credits, given you've got a cartoonist sat near you? Um, well, David Trigger, who's the guy that designed the credits, is an artist based in Glasgow, and uh, um, he's we've worked with him before. He, he did a little poster for a short film many years ago, um, and we felt early on that we wanted to do something interesting with the credits, you know, um, and and it was it was sort of an idea that I, I shared with my editor um, Colin Mooney, and we just thought we'd approach him, showed him a very early um, rough cut of the film. And he came up with this idea, you know, yeah. this sort of theme of the bird flying the nest and all that. Yeah. Which, interestingly, when we showed Franz Ferdinand the band, um, the, the film much later on, they they sort of came up, they took the same theme from it uh, in in their song. Um, and, and Dave just, you know, he, he drew the storyboards, and, and we kind of went great. We'll cool. Go for it. Um, uh, <laughs> this question's more about influences, because I was sort of picking up on, um, you know, other films that have a an outsider on the fringes of British society, like say Kez or Little Voice or uh, Billy Liar. And it also came across as a bit of an anti or an inverse monarch of the Glen, set in a <laughs> big <laughs> Scottish pile, but everything's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, Alistair McKenzie, the audience, by the way. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, you know, actors and directors, if any of those influences are in there or if not, you know, what did you pick up? There are lots of unconscious, there are lots of Hitchcock influences, which are kind of, you know, you know sort of fairly obvious. And, um, and and I was sort of, I guess my other influences were more like kind of the French New Wave films. You know, I wanted to do a film which was a sort of, sort of slightly magical but realist movie, you know, I mean, you know be it in a bubble or not. You know, um, and, uh, you know, and, and that was, so, and, and, to, and to have some joy with the cinema as well, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and a little bit of magic in there. And there's a sort of, I guess there's a kind of sort of mini kind of played down sort of fairy tale element to it. You know. I thought that the, the film kind of captured the essence of Edinburgh as a city and its people brilliantly. But I wonder how much of a challenge that was for the non scot stars and how they got to grips with the, that very sort of Scottish feel. Well, uh, we started uh, the. Oh shit! Um, we started up in uh, with Perthshire, right? So I mean, uh, for a start, I think that that worked better for just for me in terms of my character, just because um, that's obviously chronologically that's where the movie starts and, and I guess ends as well. So it, it it was interesting to be out there on location, just because uh, in terms of shooting, it's 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 bizarre. There's some like crazy weather cycles that blow through there. I mean, like I remember shooting this one scene with Kieran. Um, and like I, th I think it like it rained, it was snowing, it then hailed, and then got light again, then rained yet again, and then it was bright sunlight. Um, and that's it, it, I've never ever seen that before. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it was hellish for us trying to shoot it because it makes no sense when you like move the cameras different ways. Because in Kieran's coverage, it's like snowing, and in my coverage, it's raining. And it's like, <laughs> where the fuck are these people? <coughs> um, but you know, I mean, just so just in terms of that, just being out on the land, uh, being nearby a loch and, and stuff, and getting to grips with, with David and getting a routine of shooting and stuff and um, uh, honing the accent and getting the accent on camera and stuff and, and getting that done was was really important. So by the time I got to Edinburgh and started working in the hotel, I, I felt, uh, let's say, slightly more comfortable and not so intimidated doing, you know, the accent and pretending to be this Scotsman around so many other Scotsmen, you know. Anything? anything uh, no, I just, I think... But just the fact that we were submerged, we were living in the hotel that we were shooting in, so we were, and we were, it was all very realistic, sort of being submerged in the culture and being up in Scotland, your, you know, you, your ear becomes quite tuned to, you know, to mm. it all, mm. and, um, mm. and we had a lovely time up there, though, really good. Well, so I, I didn't never realise what an amazing skyline that city has, oh, yeah. until you really get up there, you know, like a lot of buildings are uh, very gothic looking, and, and uh, quite dark too, and it, it's kind of interesting, I, I I never expected that, you know, um, just reading from the, the script. Um, but when you actually really get up there and really see it,